intelligible. The intelligible world is not the supreme. Oh, yes, <clears throat> there's a couple of pages. I thought we'd get into Thomas Shelley. Cool. And luckily enough, uh, it turns out that uh, at page 159, that happens to be the point that he's making in the very essay we're in. No. That's a startling <laughs> coincidence, is it not? <laughs> Reading I remember, again. I remember you opening the Tao Te Ching. Yeah, just open up the Tao Te Ching. Here it is. <laughs> no, no, the book of changes. Right. Right? Then. Oh, okay. Hold it for page number. One <laughs> The Platonic reader will find in these books instances of sublimity beyond all comparison with any other writings and specimen, specimens of a profundity of thought unequaled by any other philosopher. He's talking about Plotinus. I am sensible that the uh, great labor I have employed in this translation will be most probably lost on the present generation. <laughs> and it was. And it was. And it sure as hell was. <laughs> Dopes. <laughs> Not the romantic. Therefore, he's going to pick up Book Five, the Fifth Aeneid. And therefore, here, right, it's goal, right in the middle of the page. He's chosen two works of Plotinus, mm -hmm. the intelligibles are not external to intellect and concerning the good, and the other concerning intelligible beauty. I have particularly chosen these, not only because they are Admirably, they admirably unfold the depths of the Platonic philosophy and theology because the first relates to the vision of the Supreme, explaining the wonderful manner in which it is accomplished, and the second describes the method of becoming united with the intelligible world. Right? We're all there on page 159? Now, if we pick it up from here, <clears throat> we'll find that he goes from arguing in a very interesting way of how many people fail to understand this and why they fail to understand these two topics. He's going through three pages. And it's very interesting because it doesn't answer these, but what it is is a study of the people who try to understand this and totally fail to understand it, and he gives an account of why they are mistaken. Mm. Now, Why is that important in covering this subject? So, yeah. What is he doing? Right. He wants to talk about something, and he says, wait a minute, before I talk about it, I want to talk about all the ways in which this is misunderstood. Mm -hmm. And I'll explain all the reasons why this is misunderstood. Then I'll tell you what I think. So that's what he's doing. 
And we can go through that, and you can see it yourself. But I thought we would just jump for a few minutes into where he picks up the actual discussion, dealing most forthrightly with the issue. Um, um, and of course, and when he talks about why people are confused about this, he does say some very interesting things about the subject, of course. Um, So, uh, we have a choice. We can go to this first part or jump to where he then talks about the nature of intellect and because that's the leading issue being behind this discussion. <clears throat> so let me try it, okay? Let's try something. Let's go directly to the section where he opens it up, which is at 162 and see whether the difficulties we may have in understanding it, he's covered from 159 to 162. Mm -hmm. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? So therefore, for tonight, we need to know the difficulties you have in understanding what Thomas Taylor is doing as he paraphrases Plotinus. <clears throat> Starting at 162. So why don't we just do, let's really do some real high, high pressure work and do four sentences. <laughs> what do you think? Six, seven, two. They're all three words each. I can read any four sentences. You can read any four? An hour. All right, well then we're in. <coughs> this one nature, intellect, did you have it? Mm hmm Oh, yeah, please, loud? could you? Yes, I'd appreciate it. Be it right. Everyone have a copy or is looking at a copy? Thank you. Let's jump. This one nature, intellect, therefore, is all beings. It is truth. It is a great deity. Or rather, it is not any particular God, but is deservedly every deity. And such is the nature of this second divinity appearing to beholders before they survey that superior God who is seated in sublimer majesty on the illustrious throne of intellect depending from his ineffable nature. For it is highly proper that he should not subsist in an inanimate seat nor again immediately occur to us moving in the circular chariot of soul but that an inestimable beauty should wonderfully shine before his appearance, as before the presence of a mighty king. For to such as advance to his intuition, it is ordained that lesser things should first occur, and afterwards that such as are greater should gradually present themselves to the view, and that such as surround the king should be more royal, and the rest in a degree proportionate to their distance from his ineffable glory. But after all these, the mighty king himself suddenly shines forth to the view, while the rest venerate the king in a suppliant manner. Such I mean as do not depart from thence till they have proceeded to the last spectacle of all, like those who are satisfied with the splendor of the attendance on majesty. Another king, therefore, reigns in this intelligible world, and his attendants are different from his nature. But the supernal king does not rule over foreign subjects, but he 
possesses a just and natural government and a true kingdom, mm -hmm. since he is himself the king of truth and is naturally the lord of his offspring, the universe, and of the divine company of the mortal gods. Hence he is the king of a king and of kings, <coughs> and is called by a juster name, the father of the gods, whom indeed Zeus in this respect imitates, since he does not acquiesce in the contemplation of his father, but proceeds beyond this to his grand sire as to an energy in the very subsistence to postesis of his essence. Okay, that's where he launches into it, and the next paragraph he ties in with the one or the supreme. Here we go. As you're reading, as you're reading, what do you want to achieve? Um, how are you proceeding as you're going through the paragraph? Uh, did you stop? Where? Did you go on? Did you get stuck? What was it like going through this paragraph? Now, the only people who are interesting tonight are the people who got stuck. And I imagine that would be very few. And therefore, as Jeff always says, therefore you can call on anybody <coughs> to give an account of the paragraph. Isn't that what you always say? Yes, yeah, something like that. What do you think? So go through it again yourself now. Okay, go through it yourself.
Okay, was there any part that blocked? Come on, let's try it. What do you think? subjects of the one king were foreign that's his goal okay now I ask it again watch is Thomas Taylor what is his purpose in pointing out that one of the kings has subjects or attendants, attendants that are foreign. And the other? And the other, they are not foreign to his nature. Mm Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Did, another one? What did, you, what did you write there? I wrote problem. There's a contrast, the contrast between two kings and subjects. <clears throat> okay, try this. If someone were to ask you to try to make a statement such that you would be able to include as much as you can put together of that paragraph, would it cost you any difficulty? Would you have any difficulty doing it? Mm -hmm. If so, where? got a task, doesn't he? The restoration of Platonic theology. So he's got to present it. This is Platonic theology. So he wants to restore it. That means he has to bring it up in some way. Clear enough to play a role in what he calls the restoration of Platonic theology. Uh, everyone agree with this, by the way? Say this is an issue? Could you add more to it? By the way, would you agree that no one you know of, if you ever ask them what is the intellect or the nature of the intellect, would ever give that answer that he gave in the first sentence? Yeah. Would you agree? I mean, nobody. No one. No one. Right? Right. Unless they were from Brooklyn, of course, which is yeah. a special case of saints. Stop. My, my question was, he mentions the superior God, capital G, one. And I don't know if by that he means the supreme, of which the, uh, the intellect is an emanation or a creation through which the universe appears. Does he mean by, by God, capital G, does he mean the supreme? And if he does, then he, get, he tells us that we can actually survey if within our grasp. Uh -huh. And uh, Yeah, read that sentence. And such is the nature of the second divinity appearing to beholders before they survey that superior God 
who were seated in sublimer majesty on that illustrious throne of intellect. Because if you, because pay, the, if you pay attention to the word survey, which is what you're doing, right? <clears throat> that is to see or to encounter, right? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, deep heaven, or hanging from his ineffable nature. Ineffable cannot be surveyed. Um, see, um, that's normally true. But is it true from where, is that what he is saying? Yes, that's what I don't know. That's what we want to know. Not whether or not it just we disagree with it, but we first just simply want to know what is his position in respect to this most curious notion. And you're quite right in pointing it out. It's the major issue. And such is the nature of this second divinity, appearing to beholders before they survey that superior God, who, by the way, is seated in sublimer majesty on the illustrious throne of intellect, depending from uh, his ineffable nature. Okay, would you agree we've departed from the first son? And we're now talking about the kings. Yes, yeah. <coughs> Okay. Look. Watch. There should be no no <coughs> difficulty whatsoever in the first sentence. If you were to say why, mm. I'd say because that's why he defines intellect, yes. the nature of intellect. Agree? I mean, that's what he says. Mm -hmm. That's his position. Whether we agree or not, that's what he's saying. That's his position. Uh, <clears throat> agree? So we've yeah. got that down? Then there's no difficulty whatsoever with the first sentence. Mm -hmm. So the problem I had going through this is trying to figure out if he's talking about two different kings all the way through. Yeah, I noticed that. But I think uh, <clears throat> I've discovered that this whole paragraph is talking about intellect. Oh. Um, I mean, he does make mention of the other, the superior God, but the one king being discussed is intellect throughout this paragraph. No, so you're in this problem. We were just in the first sentence. So yeah. hold that for the second. <clears throat> right, agree? Everybody therefore understands without any, any hesitation, qualification, <clears throat> What he means by the one nature, intellect. Agree? The one, or the nature of one intellect, nature of intellect. Agree? That was my problem, actually, was whether it was this one nature, comma, intellect, comma, yeah. synonymous. Yeah. Because there, I mean, he certainly... Depends on where you put the commas. Mm -hmm. And there aren't any. Yeah, mm -hmm. and not only that, where he puts commas, baffles some of us. That's true. Or if he writes the way I do, I kind of uh, use commas as a sower used to sow seeds. Just throw them around. <laughs> <laughs> no, sprinkle them on the page. <laughs> okay. Okay. So then what does he call the intellect? All beings, truth. In the second sentence. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> First. Second. Second, second. Such is the nature of the, the second, divinity. second divinity.
Well, I see it. Deservedly. Okay. I know you jumped on to the second sentence. But why <laughs> deservedly in the first sentence? Okay. Well, is deservedly every deity? It's like the merit badge or what? How do you take that? Well, well. He, he's uh, raising it, isn't he? Deservedly. It's honorifically? Honorifically. honorifically. Hmm. Isn't he kind of making it unqualified in a certain sense? No, no qualification. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying, unqualified. No. So, look here. If we have... We don't really want to do that. If we do that, why does he say it is a great deity or not particular, but it's deservedly every deity? Deservedly has more yeah. to it than that, since yeah. it's that which bridges the gap between a deity and every deity, it seems to me. Yeah, that's so mm. intellect. Okay, but. Mm -hmm. Look, well, in this beautiful picture up here, would you agree? Right off the basis of it, you can see immediately they are deities. four different deities. Yes. Is that a, <laughs> You don't have never saw pictures of deities before? They look like circles. <laughs> well, I'll change your opinion. <laughs> oh. um. And each one of these is a deity. It's also, they also are. Uh, Insofar as they're deities, they also have some subsistence. Therefore, they're also beings, are they not? Looks that way. Looks that way. Yeah, not only that, if they're deities, they have some particular way of appearing truthfully, and therefore, they also uh, can be called uh, truth. Is that right? Good. Um, And it's a great deity. Mm -hmm. right? Well, the young one, it's a great deity. Mm -hmm. hmm. But it's deservedly, right? It's one, but deservedly, it's every single one of them. So, in that sense, it's both one and many. Mm -hmm. Any problem? Is that what you're saying? Is, is uh, beans, uh, therefore, it is all beans. Yeah. Uh, is, Plural. Right. Does that include, uh, how far does that extend? Is, is that to grasshoppers or? Grasshoppers do not participate in being with a capital B. Hmm. But in no. becoming with a lowercase b. <laughs> becoming, yes. <laughs> being, no. So beans, <coughs> beans are just, uh, are the forms? Right out. Hmm. But do you agree we have absolutely no problem with the first sentence? See, the problem is going to be, will he keep to this as he develops the rest of the paragraphs? Mm -hmm. Or in another way, is the rest of the paragraph already contained in this? Mm -hmm. Can you give some examples of uh, beans? Mm -hmm. Uh, any deity will do. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm mean, right? Yes or no? That's right. Could I have some examples of deities? Yes, Zeus, Apollo, Aphrodite, of course, close to our soul. How about Athena? She Throw of Athena people? in, too. She's always hanging around. Since we're talking about intellect. Yeah. Okay. But in one way, we don't really want the examples yet, right? Because we're trying to we're trying to figure out how this language is is or is not consistent throughout the whole paragraph. That's so right. We start plugging something in for beans yeah. before we finish it. A thousand percent right. Therefore, it will save me even shopping around for examples. Thank you. <laughs> Anything that saves me work is true. <laughs> Dialectician. Dialectician. How about the second one? Come on. Keep the same way of going. Now, everything that, everything he says from this point on, he has to hang on to this. 
And in one sense, it has to emerge from it. Want a reader? I'll give people a moment. Now, one of the problems with Thomas Taylor is to figure out what the antecedent is. You know, what is he talking about? Which, where does it go back to? So that's normal. So take a minute out. I'm going to get a little more something cold to drink. Be right back. Okay, we push. In this second paragraph, just stay with one question for a moment. Right? Pick up all the references to the word king. One, two, three, what are they? Take a look. Isolate them.
Let me ask you a question as you read. Um, does he proceed with images? <coughs> does he proceed with images in such a way that you can forget the content, stay with the images, and see how he develops the images? Um, Well, that is very typically platonic. Right. So that way you can get, does he think with images? In other words, does he have, as it were, a set of images in his mind and he can just talk about them? Yeah, right. Then he's an idaic thinker. He thinks in terms of these images, right? Mm -hmm. Is that the way, is that what's controlling the way in which he proceeds in this essay? then you have to match it. You have to match the author, whatever author. <clears throat> so what we need is to stage it. See, if there are images of kings and thrones, let's stage it. Mm -hmm. Can you stage it in your mind? Come on, so you... Mm -hmm. What's around it? Come on, picture it. What's around it? What points does he make to separate and distinguish each of them? You don't get caught up trying to agree or disagree. Mm -hmm. right, try to reproduce it in your own thought. So therefore, we should have, each of you should draw a sketch, see, a sketch, and pass it around. Mm -hmm. Who's ever doing the best sketch would mean to what degree and represent what's on the page. To that degree, that's the person who we should say, hey, you are a good artist in presenting ideas graphically, right? A six-pack, four-pack. The love of it. And that's why... Barbara brought up these colored chalks so that people can practice with many colors. <laughs> Their artwork. Agreed. How about you draw for us, Peter?
not sitting down? Hmm? How come he's not sitting down? I don't know. That's a strange word. Have you ever heard of? Yeah. Well, I'd use what you heard. <laughs> Unless you see it doesn't fit. <laughs> right? And therefore I can save me giving answers that she knows the answers for. Yes, but we're talking about a mighty king. I noticed that. So, I, yeah. I don't know much about maybe... The intuition of mighty kings. So that's Pardon me. Maybe why I was you know perfectly well what you mean by the word intuition. Right now, you have to see that you're caught in some kind of a difficulty. And what's the difficulty? Um, you already said it, if you understand it. Wherever an author is using words that you're familiar with in a very favorite way and make sense to you, and if you find the author is using the same terms in a different way, you're going to be stuck. Unless you give up what you think, and then it's easy. Beautiful. Well, it's like talking to your bookie. <laughs> <laughs> Is the mighty king's intuition the same as the intellect? I don't know. Mark everything you don't know. Come on, mark it. Um, the, the question is, how is the vision accomplished? How, how do we advance yeah. to, to this vision? That's if you say more, I can either agree or disagree. Right now, I'm neutral. Yeah, right. Right now, we're working on, on how to get... That's right. That's right. It's purely a how. It's purely a how. <clears throat> See, it, it's like painting, right? Like, these are, this is a set of colors. And you've got to dabble and you've got to reproduce what's there. Right? The words are colors. You've got to paint. You've got to use the right colors. Not yours. His. So, yes. I think, I think in a way to answer it, um, your question, if it were answered, would rob you of your um, challenge to pull together the sentences, which is what Pierre suggested, pull together what's happened in the sentence to arrive at your own answer. If he were to say, yes, that's intellect, then you would no longer have the question, and you wouldn't do the work, and your, and your power of intellect and reading would not improve, or seeing. Uh-huh. So or I'm using sorry. my intellect. Exactly so. Yeah. Thanks. Well, I thought I'd share that with you. Yeah. Thanks. I, I didn't hear what she said. What was it she just said? She gently said you were helping me. She said... Oh, is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> I, I said you were helping her by not answering. Yeah, that you would rob. Oh, rob let me do that again. Oh. <laughs> um, another problem is, you see, can we assume that wherever anybody has a difficulty, that what precedes it is already understood? No. <laughs> that's, imp no. that's vitally important. No, no, that's vitally important, isn't it? Right. Because if it is some developmental theme he's carrying on, 
and he's using images such that it should interrelate. If you have a problem somewhere further down, but haven't grasped what preceded, your solution may be in what you skipped over. Yes. Mm -hmm. If he is this kind of thinker. And if he's controlled by a set of images that progress and develop, he is that kind of thinker. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you what we want to do. Let's see if we can get a volunteer. Daniel, who do you think we should get as a volunteer? Me. Okay, okay, okay. You are now a director. Okay. All right? We want you just to find a way to, to present that second sentence. Which right? sentence? In some kind of a production. Comic strip. Uh, especially, you know, comic strips are really the best. sentence that Um, <clears throat> what's that? It's a th throne of the intellect. See the throne? Yeah. Isn't that a beautiful picture of a throne? <laughs> and what are these dudes? Uh, the, yeah. Huh? What are they? I think those are probably the um, beholders. Yeah, the yeah. Don't they look like beholders? <laughs> <laughs> they need sunglasses. No, oh, good, good. Hold it. <laughs> <laughs> sunglasses. <laughs> That's right. Dress them up. But before they get in between them and the throne of intellect, there's all the other, all the other deities. Mm -hmm. okay. Did I mistake? With a, with a king of those. So, um, what's the relationship between the throne and the superior king? In that sentence. How about Barbara? Well, uh, <clears throat> I was attempting not to rob anybody, but I will attempt to give an answer to that, okay? Which was, it looks like there's a name, the second deity appears to right, So there's something that reflects back on the preceding yes. sentence. Yes, <clears throat> So we'll put it here, right? And we can say, by heavens, uh, whatever that was, that was the nature of the second God. Okay.
Well, it's reflective. Ah, that was just yeah. now. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Okay. So now they're, um, and, and, and curiously, in the language is pretty consistent. It appears to them, right? So you have to have that in your image, that not only do they behold it, but it appears to them, right? So it's active. But also, okay, so then that is before they then see this superior God, and that superior God is seated. Like well, there. Would you agree the issue is going to be what is in the seat? I agree, absolutely. Right? Look, <clears throat> when you do this, <clears throat> you have more than one sketch. Sure. You don't decide. Sure. Right. Right? You have two. two. So in one of them you put? Zeus. And the other one you put? And one of them you're going to throw out as it goes on, aren't you? You don't have to decide. You mean? Never the, decide. Do you mean the expression, who is seated in sublime majesty, could go either with, well... If there's, any grounds, if there's any grounds for anything going either way, you make a double of your sketch and you hold them both. Okay. Right. Don't decide. Let the book decide. Now, if we have that, would you agree now there's a discussion about this seat? Would you agree with that? The throne? Uh-huh. So we have, we have this. We have two sketches. Either that's intellect or the superior God. Uh-huh. One or the other. Right. And we don't care which, do we? That's right. Okay. That's right. You don't care. You keep them open. Go ahead. It wasn't your question which of, or did you want me to read? Uh, um, or are we working with the last phrase? For Depending it, from his ineffable Yeah, yeah, yeah. For it is highly proper that he should not uh, subsist in an inanimate seat. Mm. Agree? We're now talking about this. Right. Right? right? And we're saying it's animate. Mm. Inanimate. Inanimate. No, no, no. no because animate. he should not. Yeah. yeah. He should not subsist in an inanimate seat. So then the seat must, can't be. It should not subsist in a. Inanimate seat. Right, therefore. It's animate. Okay, therefore it's alive. Alive. Right? Vitality. Mm -hmm. Right, that hides that major issue. Uh Go ahead. nor again immediately occur to us, moving in the circular chariot. No, nah, it's not one of those things. Which, which suggests the uh, same image as the Phaedrus, right? Yeah. That there is a yeah. circular motion yeah. of the chariot of the soul, yeah. and they're saying that this vision is not going to occur in that. that uh, it's not that. It's not one of them. No. Good to know. Good to know. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, but... That an inestimable beauty, beauty, which one can take as infinite, can we? If we cannot yeah, 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 yeah. An infinite beauty should wonderfully shine before his appearance, as before the presence of a mighty king. So this looks like it's location rather than temporal, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Uh, question. His. What are our choices? His Two. <laughs> You keep them both. Yes. Right? And you let the work decide. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right? Yes. Therefore, yes. we know one thing. There's a certain time sequence of whatever, whichever is going to take on the throne. That's right. Right? It's not immediate. Right. And therefore, we have to put that in some way, don't we? Uh, before his appearance, mm-hmm. right? There must be what? Uh, infinite beauty. Infinite shining. shining, infinite beauty, which is a nice thing to have. Mm-hmm. 
and that precedes whichever, whatever one of our two figures is going to land in the chair. Yes. And we don't care, do we? No. No. But we have a new thing. <coughs> For to those such as advance to his intuition. Uh, right? No, no, uh, uh, just the preceding. Oh, we didn't we just do that? Wonder if, uh, as before the presence of a mighty, a mighty king, king, right? But it's at the, in being as, it could yeah. still yeah. refer to. Metaphor. Mm -hmm. Well, pardon me, likeness, right? Likeness. Now we're now for what? The next sentence. Okay. For to such as advance to his intuition, it is ordained that lesser things should first occur, and afterwards that such as are greater should gradually present themselves to the view. That's enough. Did the preceding sentence have a before and after? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Is he picking up the before and after? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting, though. What? Well, he's got a before and after in the preceding? He does. It, does that control the next image that he has in the sentence? Yes. Well. Mm -hmm. And now he's talking about, he's using this to talk about intuition, is he not? Yes. Ah. Ah. So that whole thing is a metaphor to talk about intuition. For to such as advance to his intuition, it is ordained that lesser things should come first, afterwards those that are greater, and they should gradually present themselves to view. Right? Right? So you got... Continue. But after all these, the mighty king himself suddenly shines forth to the view. Oh, sorry, I missed a sentence. And that such as, well, and that such as surround the king should, should be more royal, and the rest in a degree proportionate to their different distance from his ineffable glory. So we have a parallel structure, don't we? Yes. yes. This is now being explained as? Degrees, of mm. Degrees to which one is close to a king. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, so, so this is like mm -hmm. That's right? Degrees, same kind of problem. Mm -hmm. So the greater is closer. Agree? The greater is closer. Oh, yes. Right? So it's the opposite of what he had before. The more royal. Hmm. Right, but the same image as you're just giving it a, a, a nice spin. Okay. Go ahead. But after all these, the mighty king himself suddenly shines forth. Ah, interview. Ah! 
Seven. No, right, he's going to what? Seven. Yeah. And let's see what we got to do with him. It's just interesting that sudden and gradual, right? Yeah, sudden and gradual. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> He suddenly appears, and all of those around him progressively appear to this degree to which they are proportionally close to him. Mm -hmm. Right, right. While the rest venerate the king in a suppliant manner. Mm -hmm. That suggests them, right? <laughs> The closer, the more suppliant, and the, the, the more honorific. So, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Such, I mean, as do not depart from thence till they have proceeded to the last spectacle of all. Mm -hmm. Like those who are satisfied with the splendor of the attendance on majesty. Such, I mean, as do not depart from hence. Mm -hmm. So they proceeded to the last spectacle of all, mm. like those who were satisfied with the splendor of the attendants, right, on majesty. Mm. Fine. Don't be satisfied with these little things. Get as close as to the king as you can. <clears throat> Another king, therefore, reigns in this intelligible world, and his attendants are different from his nature. Okay, now, got to make a decision. You either have a new picture, right, a new picture, or this has to be adapted to it. Agree? Take a look. Another king, right, another king, mm -hmm. reigns in uh, this intelligible world. Hmm. Hmm. So, you know what you do? Draw another picture. Mm -hmm. And if it fits, glue it on. <laughs> That's all. We don't worry, do we? No. So now we have another king. So we'll put him over here. And that was the way we started this problem. Hey, can we talk about these kings and who they are and how they differ? Another king. And these, also, these guys have, this guy has what? A bunch of attendants. attendants. There they are. Mm -hmm. Huh. And no matter how good they are, you know what? Different. They're not the same nature, right? So we'll make these people look like they come from Brooklyn. <laughs> That'll suggest different nature. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Go on. Yeah. But this supernal king does not rule over foreign subjects. No. Mm. Not him. But he possesses a just and natural government. Mm. 
and a true kingdom. Mm. Mm -hmm. Since he is himself the king of truth. Oh. Oh, wait a while, wait a while, wait a while, wait a while, wait a while. Um, this was, what is it, the first sentence? Uh, it is the, truth. Yeah. This is the king of king truth. Of truth. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so therefore we know it's above that. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> right. Um, and is naturally the Lord of his offspring, the universe, and of the divine... Okay, God. therefore, his offspring is the universe. cosmos, right? King of Kings and this last phrase, and of the divine company of immortal gods. Yes. All right. So therefore, he's not only gave birth to the cosmos, but to. Well, he's the Lord of the divine company. Right. Therefore, he's going to be a. Go ahead. Oh, hence he is the king of a king and of kings. King of king, king of kings, gave birth not only to the universe, but also of all the gods. Father of gods, yeah. Whom in, indeed Jupiter in this respect imitates. And Jupiter, of course, is Zeus. Mm -hmm. Since he does not acquiesce, acquiesce in the contemplation of his father, but proceeds beyond this, to his grandsire, as to an as to an energy in the very subsistence, hypostasis of his essence. Okay, mm -hmm. let's hold that one. Okay, hold the end. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we kick back, and we ask a couple of questions. Okay. Can you go back over the same material with whatever sketch you've made? and see whether or not you can follow it or whether you need something to put in its place, some addition or clean something up, add or subtract to it. Does it help? Mm -hmm. All right, that's your test. That's your test. So right now, just take a few minutes out and just read it over, same thing we did together. Also raised the question of the role of nature in this nature of intellect, mm -hmm. etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. Just that's a question for me. Now this last paragraph, the last sentence, has to do, of course, with Greek mythology. But you don't need to know anything about Greek mythology to follow it. Well, does it look like Jupiter is mentioned, or Zeus? Does it look like he's talking about his father and his father's father? Is that right? Yes. 
If so, then you can establish something that he's talking about, about Zeus or Jupiter, about his father or his father's father, can you not? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, like the king, the king of kings, you've got the same hierarchy? And you can put alongside of it each one, each statement made, can't you? Okay, let me, you're going through it now, looking over it once more, are you not, by yourselves? Mm -hmm. Not while you're talking. <laughs> ah, shut up, that's good. <laughs> I need to shut up. Okay, can I ask you now, um, was this worth going through this way, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Second question. <clears throat> Is it possible to the degree that you found it useful, right? Could you just close your eyes for a minute? I'm going to ask you some questions, okay? Watch. Okay. Are there some beholders? Is there a throne of the intellect? Is there something that comes before they can see the uh, superior kin? Is there anything about the uh, throne that's uh, curious? Is it animate or inanimate? Huh? Huh. Some issue of beauty, infinite beauty? And then is there a certain curiosity about before you can see the king, there's something that precedes the king, some kind of beauty, presence of beauty? Is that, is that right? See, what I'm doing is I'm trying to get you to see the image with your eyes closed for a moment, whether you're familiar with them. Is it possible, now watch, is it possible that if this hangs together, that you can then talk about it? on a much more even, free basis? Mm -hmm. Because then you'd be talking through these images, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Then you'd be talking the way he writes, or thinks. And we don't care whether we agree or disagree, do we? Irrelevant. Now, with Plotinus, you can go through every one of his essays and do this. It all fits. A whole bunch of images. You have to do the work. And you can share it with someone. Hey, here's my picture, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, really, you can share it. Now, for everything that we now we can kick back and say, you know, there are a lot of things here I really don't understand. You say, oh, good. <laughs> right? Then you go back, as it were, over your diagram, right? and you do this. Not sure about the beholders, not sure about the throne, right, etc. It's an IOU. The author has to make each one of these points clear. He can't do it all at once. It's impossible. 
because he's operating on a level of eidetic imagery brought together and unified as he brings up a whole series of parallel functions. Mm -hmm. Can't bring it all together. So we can put all the mysteries we have about this, identify them as we go further, and then as they're cleared up, put in the information you need. takes up a curious kind of work, does it not? But you can do it. Anybody can do it. And I'm giving a talk uh, at Waldorf to the kindergarten kids on how to read. <laughs> That's enough. What do you think? Take a break. Thank you. Find it useful? Yes. Right? Match the what do you do? You forget your questions. What's the hell with your questions? What do you want to do? You want to represent the author as best you can. The heck what he means, because as we go through, he should make clear whatever he means. The last thing is understanding, yes. not the first. Don't go for understanding. It's very foolish, because <laughs> that's the result of the end, bringing it all together. Mm. If I try to identify one of those kings with a demi or that would be okay, yeah, okay, That right. would be uh, No, no, go ahead. Put it down as a possibility. Put it down as a possibility. <laughs> Say, could be, but leave yourself open. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Don't go for understanding. That's last. That's Don't last. That's first. Right. What's, what's first, then? Oh, yeah, everything that I think troubles analysis. you. Well, before analysis, making distinctions. distinctions. Being able to represent the distinctions in terms of images, linking the images together into patterns. Finding the patterns, patterns allow you to see parallel lines of development. The thing is, there aren't too many writers who write like this. Well, you see, the earlier part of what we skipped is that he's going, to, the point he's making is people who have difficulty understanding me, that's what Plotinus is saying, that's because they're using their way of understanding what I'm saying and it ain't going to fit. Mm -hmm. And he points that out again and again and again. So, like, if you bring your question and your point of view to try to understand what he's saying, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. The whole thing is built off of analogy. That's right. There are too many writers who write like that. That's right. Plato, Plotinus, oh, yeah. yeah. the Dream Master. Paul Drew. The Dream Master. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, indeed. Yeah. It's the integrity of the Logos. You're going to stay with the author. Have to respect the author. You have to respect your fellow man, or it's all a bunch of bullshit. Right? There's an integrity of the logos. There's an integrity of people. You have to match it if you want to understand them. Even in dialogue. Not no, not even in dialogue. Especially in dialogue. Well, I say Same with the word I'm not even. I'm saying even in dialogue. Yeah, okay, that was. I've just had fun with the word even. Oh. I missed it. Missed okay. the fun part. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm having fun now, though. <laughs> All right. Hey, come on. Thank you. Fun. Thank you. So we'll pick up from here. Now you know how to read Plotinus. Come in with all your pictures next week. And we'll dance our way through it. <laughs> <coughs> See why it's not worth answering questions? Because you'll rob me of my... My seeing. It'll rob you of my seeing. Coming, coming to that seeing, and it right before I say it doesn't rob you of the seeing. And it also, it it brings up pathologos for me, or wondering, you know, roles I play in between. That's all drops when, when, when you do this. When I'm asking for clarification. Or yeah, you don't need it. Sometimes I do. No, you don't. Not with this game. That's all oh, a bunch because of you're just saying That's all just a bunch follow of it because it's the yeah. process. It's not yeah. right. 
But it, I'm working with a group of people, and if, so I, what? if I'm in the process and I have these participants, then it's... You think that gives you an excuse to look for support? Heck yes. Baloney. What makes you think you need it if you do it? Because I'm different and, and separate. Ah, baloney. And there are capacities. Ah. Well, you're not hearing me out. Of course not, because you're not making any sense. Really? Of course not.